In this video, we're going to talk about what recently happened to my neck. But before we do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already, and comment on it for the sake of the algorithm. So, this is a little bit of a funny video. My wife told me it might be cool to make. I've been receiving a lot of comments on the channel since I started lifting weights again about three or four months ago about my neck, which, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a funny situation. I thought I'd answer the questions here. And also, maybe I could give you some tips for those of you that actually do want larger necks. First of all, I have not been training my neck whatsoever, just FYI. This is a result of eating more protein, having slightly higher androgen levels, and working out generally. It's muscle memory. Muscle memory is a real thing in the body. Once you develop a muscle very well, it redevelops very quickly. So for example, I've been going to the gym. I'm a little bit fat now, so these measurements aren't exact. I mean, they're not the same as they used to be before, but I've only been going to the gym for three and a half months or so now, and my arms are already 18 inches again, although they're, as I said, fat. They're not like they used to be before. So they quickly, muscle quickly returns to what it used to be if you return it to an anabolic environment and give it the stimulus. So that's, in this case, I didn't give the stimulus to my neck. It just regrew on its own. And it didn't regrow fully. My neck was much larger than this uh, when I was an arm wrestler. In fact, I almost looked like I had no neck from certain angles, uh, which I'll talk to you guys about here. I'll tell you some details about how to train the neck and so on. But why have I not been training my neck? The reason is, number one, training the neck puts an undue amount of stress on the spine in an area actually that a lot of people get injuries. Like for example, you guys may know that Lee Priest, Craig Golias, and actually myself as well, all have nerve impingements that are somewhere around our neck that are affecting one of our arms. So for example, my right arm used to be one inch bigger than my left arm, and now my left arm is half an inch bigger than my right arm. So these are things you don't, you don't really wanna put an undue vertical load on your spine. And in particular, if you do, you don't wanna then bend your spine especially around the neck with that load. So what I'm talking about is people who are lifting over 100 pounds with their head in particular, which is what I used to do. This puts a lot of strain on the spine. The second reason I'm not training my neck is because I suffered severely from sleep apnea toward the end of my arm wrestling time. And I don't want to ever have sleep apnea again. Sleep apnea is a really, uh, it's actually a deadly condition in which basically uh, you gasp for air during the night because your airways somehow close. You, you, often it's because of the tongue. But in my case, I have a narrow airway and I had a lot of muscle and also I was carrying a lot of water. The water really influences it. Obviously now it would be less severe if I train my neck because I'm not on androgen, as many androgens as I used to be and stuff like that. But nonetheless, I'm too fearful of apnea. Apnea causes heart disease. It'll, it'll, it's neurotoxic. It'll damage your brain and seriously damage your life. So for that reason, I would never recommend to anybody to want to train their neck in the first place. In case you do have a narrow airway and end up with apnea. Keep in mind, most very muscular people have some kind of snoring or apnea going on. So it's something you really want to avoid generally. But say you didn't want to avoid it, what should you do? And the reason why I'm, I think I, I'm in a position to tell you is because I was born with a normal neck. I didn't have a thick neck when I was younger. And by the time I was in high school in uh, 11th grade, my neck was wider than my face, which it's not now, keep in mind. So it was, my neck was bigger than it is now in, when I was 17 years old and purely through training it. And I trained it in a very particular manner and I've trained it in several other ways since then. And so I'll give you a review of sort of my opinions on this. Number one, there are some things called neck harnesses, which in which you put like, it's like sort of a cap that has then a harness that you can attach to a loading pin and put plates on it. And therefore you can move your neck forwards or to the side. But the problem with these uh, neck harnesses or head harnesses, uh, which you can find by the way, one at ironmind.com. That's the one I used to use before. It's a, it's a grip company, but they have a neck harness as well. The problem with these neck harnesses is that you cannot, at, uh, you cannot uh, stimulate the muscle without loading the spine with them because they don't tie very well on the head. They require gravity to keep them on your head. So you can't lie horizontally like off a bench and lift the weight with your neck horizontally because the harness will come off your head. So in general, I recommend against these harnesses because you'll end up doing what I did when I tried to use them, which is using 150 pounds and lifting it like that. And that's all going on your spine. And when you, of course, when you put pressure on your body, the, especially around joints or around uh, cartilage, pieces of cartilage break off each time, cause an inflammatory reaction from the immune system, and this can cause arthritis over time. So really, you don't want to cause that in particular in that area. You may be one of those people later will, who will have to get their plates fused. So uh, that's the first thing. I don't like neck harnesses. What did I use? 
Well, what I used was a very long, narrow cloth. I found a very long, narrow cloth, maybe 10 feet long. And I would wrap that around my head and then leave, I would have like a, put it through the loading pin with the plates and lie horizontally on a bench. So it was tightly wrapped around my head such that I could lie completely horizontally and lift to the side, you know, like that, lift to the other side like that. I could lie on my belly and lift backwards and I could lie on my back and lift forwards. Now let me tell you about each of these movements then what happens. When you do the side movements, your neck gets visibly wider. This is I think what most people desire. They desire that width. The problem is if you do this back movement where you lift back and if you get very strong at it, the back of your neck will start to protrude so much that you'll look like you have no neck. That's what happened to me later, many years later. I, I ended up with like people would especially women would tell me like you don't have a neck I was like no I, I used to have a neck it's just you can't see it because there's a weird thing developed in the back so that's one thing when you do it from the front that doesn't happen quite as much but this back movement I think nobody should probably do unless they're you know fighters and they really require that kind of strength so really it's just this if I was to do it again I would do it always horizontally lying on a bench with something wrapped carefully around my head tightly and I would be doing lifts only to the side I think that would be the safest, least damage with the most growth development. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys or interesting to some degree. I'm not training my neck, but keep in mind one thing. For you, for those of you that are natural and like, oh, I won't get sleep apnea if I train my neck. It can't get that big. Remember that my neck got that big in high school. I was completely natural. It was probably 21 inches then, you know, so it can get, it can get very big for people naturally because the neck is not used to being stimulated. So even if you're natural, you may end up with sleep apnea. But, uh, you know, maybe if you just use the side movements, you'll end up with less of it. And it's certainly, I think, I think, I don't know much about fighting, like the science of fighting. Of course, I've been in many, unfortunately, I've been in many fights myself in my life, but I don't really know about the science of it. I've tried to talk to Mike Dolce about it before, but nobody's ever managed to strangle me, especially when my neck was very wide. And many, uh, people have tried before, never been, been possible. So I think it is actually a little bit protective, but I'm sure an expert could strangle me. But I mean, normal people, it gets much harder when your neck gets bigger, you know? So that's the one useful thing about it. Anyway, guys, I hope this was interesting for you. I'll see you next time.